Hello. Thank you for being with us. Thanks much for having me. Um, first of all, as I can see, uh, not all members of NATO consider Russia as a main threat to the alliance, to the security of alliance. What is your personal position on that? Where is Russia on your list of threats? Well, all allies have clearly agreed uh, at the NATO summit uh, last July that uh, the most urgent uh, and imminent uh, uh, threat we see is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is Russia. Uh, so that's a united uh, position. That's also the reason why uh, uh, we have uh, reinforced uh, uh, NATO over the last years, especially after Russia's illegal annexation of, uh, of uh, uh, Crimea in 2014 and the full-fledged invasion of of Ukraine in 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, if Russia attacks Latvia, will NATO defend the country and go to war with Russia? The core purpose of NATO uh, is that an attack on one ally uh, will be regarded as an attack on all allies, uh, one for all and all for one. Uh, and um, the purpose of that is not to provoke a war, but is to prevent the war. And NATO has successfully prevented any armed attack against any NATO ally for uh, 75 years uh, because we have uh, uh, not uh, allowed any room for misunderstanding in Moscow about our determination, our, about our capability, about our will to protect and defend all allies. And of course, NATO will be there to protect Lat Latvia as will be there to protect uh, uh, all other allies. And the purpose is to prevent an attack to preserve peace. But just to clarify, do you think that this is possible, actually, that Russia, Vladimir Putin, can do it, can attack Latvia or any other NATO country? But I mean, of course, um, Eastern Europe right now, um, because obviously these are the countries at the border with Russia and Vladimir Putin has multiple times, um, well, uh, mentioned uh, this country. So do you think that the threat is serious? We don't see an imminent threat against any NATO ally. Uh, we can never take peace for granted, uh, and the world is more dangerous, uh, but NATO is also stronger uh, compared to where we were just a few years ago. Uh, so uh, NATO has proved since uh, we were established in 1949, throughout the Cold War, uh, that, that actually we are able to prevent an uh, armed attack on mm -hmm. uh, NATO allies. Uh, I, I'm myself coming from Norway, a, a, a small country bordering uh, the Soviet Union uh, and later on Russia, and, uh, and we were not attacked. Uh, we felt safe because we were part of uh, uh, NATO, and, and, and that's the case uh, also today for Norway and all other countries that are uh, bordering Russia uh, uh, in the alliance. But, Secretary General, when you say that, you know, one for all and all, all for one, we can hear that Donald Trump... Uh, person who can become a president of the United States of America again, encouraging, actually, Russia to attack NATO can mem member countries if they don't pay, as he, um, as he says. So it does it mean that the United States, as a main member of the alliance, is not going to defend anyone, including Latvia, if Russia attacks? So Latvia spends more than 2% uh, uh, of GDP. Uh, <laughs> but on, uh, okay, we understand defense, what he but, means, but, actually, no, but, right? But, but, yeah, but yeah, I understand what you, but, uh, but what, what you mean. And, and, the, and my message is that uh, the United States, uh, uh, the current administration, um, and, and successive US administrations have made it clear again and again that they uh, are committed to NATO because they realize that a strong NATO is good for Europe, but it's also good for the United States. It makes the United States stronger and more capable of dealing with uh, many different threats because the United States in NATO has something no other NATO ally has, and that is uh, more than 30 friends uh, uh, and uh, uh, no other major power has, and that is 30 friends and allies in, uh, in NATO. Um, uh, and then we, I think it is important to also to realize that the criticism is not mainly about NATO. It's mainly about NATO allies not spending enough uh, on NATO. And the good news is that now we see that NATO allies are really stepping up, spending much more. Uh, uh, almost all allies in the eastern part of the alliance are, are actually 2% uh, 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 and above. Uh, 18 allies are now spending 2% or more uh, on defence, and uh, more and more allies will be there uh, very soon. So, so this has changed dramatically over the last years, not least because we need to 
do more uh, faced with a more aggressive Russia. But when Donald Trump says this kind of words, including encouragement of the aggressor, right, occupying the parts of Ukraine right now as we speak and the parts of Georgia, what is your response to him? Well, I made it absolutely clear that any suggestion that NATO allies will not defend each other uh, will undermine our security. The, 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 the American president, uh, 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 Joe Biden, uh, has made it absolutely clear that the United States continues uh, uh, to be committed to NATO and to our collective security guarantees. Um, uh, I also expect that uh, regardless of the outcome of the U.S. elections this fall, the U.S. will remain a committed NATO ally because it is in the U.S. security interest to have a strong NATO, because it is strong bipartisan support for NATO uh, in the United States, and because the criticism has been mainly about NATO allies not spending enough on NATO, and that has now changed. Could you explain, please, uh, Secretary General, why exactly Ukraine doesn't get an invitation to NATO? Uh, I mean, the, the roadmap, uh, the guarantees, um, and... Precisely, what are the reasons? Well, we are in the middle of the war, and of course, NATO's core uh, task is to protect uh, all allies, and an attack on one ally will trigger a response from the whole alliance. And if, if Ukraine was a member of NATO now, NATO would have been a full fledged war with uh, Russia. Um, uh, and NATO has two tasks uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we support Ukraine, and we also need to prevent the war from. Uh, escalating beyond Ukraine and become a full-fledged war between Russia and uh, NATO. Uh, so I think it is broad understanding that to become a full member in the midst of a war is extremely challenging. Uh, uh, but we have made clear that Ukraine will become a member of the alliance. Uh, and uh, we are uh, saying that not only uh, uh, in words, but also in deeds, uh, because we have moved Ukraine much closer to NATO. Uh, we have um, uh, turned the whole process into a one-step process from a two-step process. Uh, we have uh, ensured that uh, the uh, Ukrainian armed forces are becoming more and more interoperable, can work more together with the NATO forces. Uh, and uh, just today we established a new center where Ukrainian and NATO forces can, uh, can train and learn uh, from each other. So, so we are more moving Ukraine closer and closer and uh, when the condition, conditions are met and all allies agree, then they will be invited to become a full Yeah, I, I was at the Vilnius summit. I have heard all the statements, including your statements, uh, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, so th there is no clarity about when exactly Ukraine gets an invitation or any kind of roadmap about NATO membership, including the uh, forthcoming summit in uh, Washington, D.C. It's not going to... Not well, expecting any uh, it's not to me to decide what 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 okay. the, all our allies uh, heads, heads of state will decide at the at the summit uh, in 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 Washington. What mm -hmm. really matters is that uh, we need to uh, ensure that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation, and therefore okay. NATO allies are providing unprecedented military support, and that's the most urgent and important task now. Final thing that I wanted to ask you about is uh, Vladimir Putin's interview to American showman Tucker Carlson. Uh, Russian president has said again that the West has lied to Moscow, meaning the NATO expansion to the East. Is that so? And maybe you have other, uh, other thoughts and impressions after that interview, so-called interview. <laughs> NATO never uh, promised uh, not uh, to allow democratic free nations uh, in Central and Eastern Europe to join uh, the uh, alliance, um, because we believe in the right of every independent nation to choose some path. And that is actually something also Russia has subscribed to. It's not NATO forcing Poland or the Baltic countries into the alliance. It's actually those countries who, through democratic processes, decided that they wanted to be part of NATO, and we welcome them. As Sweden and Finland are joining uh, uh, NATO today because they want as sovereign nations to decide their own path. And of course, Russia cannot deny Finland or Sweden or, or any other country to become a member of uh, NATO if, they so, uh, if, if, if NATO and, and Finland and Sweden so, uh, so, so want. And therefore, I welcome uh, both of these uh, countries. Um, uh, uh, second, if the case, uh, if it was true that NATO has promised anything like uh, 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 no new members, no further uh, NATO enlargement, then it's very strange that that was not reflected in the documents that were signed at that time. For instance, the document that uh, 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 facilitated uh, the unification of uh, Germany, there is nothing about uh, no further NATO enlargement there. Uh, so this is not correct. And uh, of course, uh, all countries have the sovereign right to choose their own path. 
uh, and that's what NATO is respecting. Did you, did you watch the interview? No. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for this. Happy to see you on TV Rain. Thank you so much for having me.